All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, World Heart Day is observed on September 29th every year to raise awareness about the cardiovascular disease and promote heart healthy lifestyles globally. It was established by the World Heart Federation in 1999 and aims to educate people about the risk factors associated with heart disease and the preventive measures they can take. The day also encourages collaboration amongst government, healthcare professionals, organizations, and individuals to fight um, against heart disease. It's so interesting, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember yeah. the conversation we had this morning. Yeah. Today, I don't know, there's just this strange feeling in my chest. And then sometimes I get it and I get very scared because your heart is literally, if not the most vital, second most vital organ in the body. And once it collapses or has any sort of failure, that's mm -hmm. it. So I think in Nigeria, I think we're actually better off than most other countries because our diets, our lifestyle, and generally our culture promotes healthiness. It's not like a situation where you're consuming so much fat that blocks your arteries and your veins, but then you're not doing anything to burn it. Because even if you eat as much as you want, take all the cholesterol in the world, once you spend one day hustling on the legal street, everything <laughs> will almost disappear. So it's, I think for us, we're just like blessed naturally. We are, but Alpha, I, I think again, um, we're slowly losing that. Because again, if you look at the lifestyle with the advent of um, what we call importing international kinds of cuisine and international kinds of junk food and all of that, a lot of people are becoming a lot more sedentary, right? Yeah. Um, that, that idea you're talking about, I mean, in the years before now, you see a lot of people having to, to walk miles to their schools, yeah. having to walk miles to their farmlands and all of that. We don't have all of those anymore. So... Yeah, it's true. Our lifestyle would promote healthy living, but if you come down urban areas, you know, in the country, you it's see that. Yeah. yeah, it's you would see that there's a bit of variation. You know, now you see so many sedentary kind of you know lifestyle. And I think for anybody that is watching, please promote heart health. Do something. I mean, we started riding a bicycle. Yeah. I'm so happy <laughs> doing that with you because, I mean, I've not done it in a long time, and I realize how how much I really missed, you know, my bicycle days and all of that. So, I mean, those types of activities, those types of activities does help to pump, you know, the blood and keep it flowing. So, yeah, I mean, it's World Heart Day. If you've not done anything to pump your blood in your heart today, please try to do something. And the good thing about um, the internet now, if you just Google like home exercise, you don't even need to yeah. go out of your house. There are so many things, or is it yoga? So many things you can do that just you know keeps the um, the blood pumping. So hey, happy World Heart Day! And um, I want to say thank you to everyone too that is really doing a lot in contributing to the awareness. I know that Kanu Heart Foundation every year, year on year for years. They've been consistent because he himself, I remember when I was a child, hearing about his story, that he had to go through heart surgery and all of that. The governor of Kano. No, no, Kano, Kano um, the footballer. Okay, okay. Kano, yeah, Kano Wanko, okay, yeah, the yeah. footballer. Yeah. And, I mean, you see, I'm, I've, I've come again with my course online on Harvard. Mm. One, of the, one of the biggest hospital success in India, um, the Na Naranda, I think, um, medical city, is mm built on heart health. Because again, you think we're predisposed, the, the numbers there are much more alarming. Yeah. A lot of Indians, especially male, they're predisposed to high blood pressure, predisposed to heart attack and all of those things. Yeah. So heart health is a big issue globally. And I'm happy that some people have actually dedicated their life's work in just keeping people alive. Because once that, once that heart stops pumping, that's, that's I mean, it. that's a life that has gone there. Yeah. Right, so what did you find first in the news? Um, my news for today is going to be taken from Vanguard, and the headline says, Illegal mining will descend heavily on foreign operators sponsoring banditry. I like her. So the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dr. Dele Alaka, yesterday warned that federal governments will heavily descend on unscrupulous foreign operators sponsoring banditry to perpetrate illegal mining. Alaka stated this during a courtesy visit paid by a delegation of Nigeria-China Chamber of Mines led by its national president, Dr. Olubenga Ajala, 
in his office at the ministry's headquarters in Abuja as contained in a statement signed by the head, press and public relations, Alaba Balogun. He reiterated that the ministry is committed to establishing a multi-agency task force that will put a stop to the activities of illegal miners and their collaborators. Well, illegal, illegal mining. I think this is a sort of sensitive topic for me because every time people ask me what I want to do in terms of career, I always talk about mechatronics engineering. But then if you'd ask me what I actually want to do with that degree, part of it, a huge part of it actually, is creating infrastructural facilities that we can use to extract our own natural resources so that we can refine them into what we can use to better the country. So for the fact that there are some people who believe that they have the right to come and to take what they know isn't theirs just because there are no regulations in place that would prevent them from doing such is something that really, really ticks me off sometimes. Because Nigeria is a very blessed country. Everybody knows it. There's no denying it. But I guess the reason why people have felt so natural in taking advantage of it thus far is because we don't have those. Like I was even telling you earlier today that if we want to stop people from taking things that are, that are not theirs, we could make it very possible. All of those areas, they could be guarded by like security officials with very high-powered weapons. So if you know that you don't want to get into their trouble, you wouldn't do those kinds of things. But then I'm happy that the Minister for Solid Minerals is actually taking an active step in at least... Is he taking an active step or is he just talking tough? <laughs> I don't know. At this point, I really, <laughs> I really don't because, know. Because, hey, well, I, I mean, no, let me, I like your optimism. We, we are young. I, we, the thing is, the I, challenge is that some of us have seen so many talk tough and not do nothing. But I get you, right? I get you. Um, yeah. We are a blessed country. And again, the reason you have this kind of things happen is because there's, an, there's a huge gap. Right, in which is, you know, the the agencies are supposed to regulate and protect these things. Yes. They are not doing their job. That's why you, it continues to thrive. But you see, legal mining is a big deal. It's just like the way they say oil theft, yeah. right? It's a big deal. And the truth is, if you really want to stop it, there's an entire value chain that needs to go down. Mm -hmm. And you'll be shocked that even the security personnel would be that are supposed would be to be present, absolutely, thing, yeah. absolutely. All right, so I mean, my story is actually very interesting as well. Um, talking tough, um, Ladipo Market mm. has been shut down. It says a closure wave um, that is sweeping around Lagos. Apparently, Ladipo Market, which is the famous, if you don't know Ladipo Market, that means you've not bought it, Tokumboka. <laughs> <laughs> Ladipo Market is known for uh, Tokumbo spare parts uh, in Lagos, has been closed due to em environmental offenses. Um, the closure was ordered by. Tukumbo Wahab, which is, he is the, um, what is it called, the State Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, in response to the reckless waste, um, waste disposal on clean premises and non-payment of waste bill. Now, the closure follows Oyimbo. Apparently, Oyimbo market has been shut down. Alaya Biagba, I think market, I don't know how to pronounce that, mm. which were sealed by a Loma following warnings about non-compliance with the state environmental protection laws. Um, the laws emphasize zero tolerance for environmental offenses, such as indiscriminate refuse dumping, willful def defacing of the environment, and refusal to pay for waste services. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that this is happening because, honestly speaking, Lagos is an eyesore. And, you know, beyond even the markets, let's also start to, I, I mean, we talked about it the other day. Can we start to have people stop, like, just illicit dumping of Very refuse, just throwing yeah. refuse from your, from your car, you bring down your window and throw refuse and all of that. Like, when we start to do that intentionally, yeah. you know, I mean, I saw the governor the other day went to one of the rail tracks, I'm not sure which area now, and he was shouting on those people, this is not a marketplace, because if you literally check some of, especially around mile 12, if you check those rail tracks, they've been covered by people in the name of traders, yeah. right? These are supposed to be rail tracks that are supposed to be functioning for, for the tr um, trains to go through to transport goods and, and people, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't have all of those. So I think it is, be I mean, I like the toughness, but I like when it is more, what, what, is, what is, the language that is understood is more of enforcement. Yeah. So yes, talk tough, but let us enforce it. And I like the fact that they've shut it down. Well, about the shutting down, 
Me personally, I've only been to Ladipo Market once, and that was when it was me and my dad, and we went to get this um, was it ball bearings for the tractor in the farm. And then when I went there, the amount of people that flooded, because we were in the pickup, the amount of people that flooded the truck trying to sell us different things, I just realized that because the first thing I even noticed in the Ladipo market wasn't the waste. Mm. That is the reason for them shutting down, apparently. The first thing I noticed was the, or were the people. Mm -hmm. And then what I realized is that if you just, as a government, decide to take decisive actions to shut places like this down, places that, whether we choose to admit it or not, are economic centers for people, particularly the lower class of people in Nigeria, we would we would sort of, we will create an imbalance that will cause a ripple effect. So now that they have shut down this market, shut down that market, shut down this other market, the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that live off that market every single day, automatically they have nothing to do. Mm. And then it's said, an idle hand is the <laughs> devil's workshop. So mm. now if they begin to start doing things in the name of lack of employment that we wouldn't find fancy or we wouldn't want to have within our immediate environment, all these societal vices, whatnot, then we can't particularly blame them. But then again, then again, it's not their fault because mm. they don't have any alternative. If they are shut these guys down, and let's say after shutting down the marketplace, they have already built somewhere where they can literally just move their um, stock or whatever to, they could go, they could no, so, continue. So I get you, yeah. and you have a very valid point. Um, this is... This shutting down is not so much of, um, it's just non-compliance. So if I've sent you a letter and I say this place is dirty, fix it. Mm. I've sent you several warnings. I've sent you everything. It's you know, like last, yeah. last resort. That's last people. resort. Yeah. So for them to have gotten to this plate, um, this stage, it means that this is the last resort. Mm. So I don't know. <laughs> but we leave it for the government. Yeah, I guess. We leave it for the government. I get your point. It's actually a very valid point because you don't want to get a lot of people out of you know their day to. I and mean, these people actually earn on a daily basis, yeah. which guarantees food yeah. on the table. I get you. Mm, that's a downer. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, let's discuss digital education. Stay with us. <laughs> 